first thing I wanted to mention, this was pointed out to me this morning, and it's a very, very subtle typo, and it's actually from the original. Um, in the review that I gave you, uh, in the review that I gave you, this one here, on the very, very last question, I had a student, and we couldn't figure out why our answer didn't match Mr. Camozzi's answer key. And then we realized this graph itself has a typo. Just look up and you'll figure it out. Just look up and you'll figure it out. Let me zoom in. See this negative 5 right here? Count. How many squares down is it? And, and so we were using this as negative 4 and doubling it to get to negative 8, and then reflecting to positive 8, ending up 1 up, which was 9 and off the page. And we couldn't figure out why. The answer key that is online, Mr. Camozzi made it, and he never makes mistakes. Unlike me, he's meticulous and perfect. Um, we couldn't figure out why our answer key wasn't matching his. And then I went, oh, this is in the wrong place. And I can't fix that. That's from the original. This was actually put up by the Ministry of Education. So... for a second. So here's the plan. I've given you all a little practice test. Those of you who are watching this at home, you'll just have to pay attention. What we talked about was we could either do a question and answer session, um, but people said, I had, since I had a practice test from Alberta, we could kind of blaze through that. So we're going to do that. I will do about 10 minutes of Q&A before your test. Not much more than that, but when we start the test tomorrow, I'll do 10 minutes of ask me a couple of questions. That can be last minute details. If you say to me, hey, Mr. Duick, I don't understand transformations, I'm just going to move on to somebody else. Even if you say to me, Mr. Duick, I don't understand reciprocal, I'm going to move to somebody else. If you say to me, Mr. Duick, I was trying to do reciprocal with a twist and a reflection, like one of those really nasty ones, and I kept getting the wrong answer, that I'll, I'm willing to fine tune or touch up on. Bear with me while I have a beverage here. So the little practice test is this one here, right? And I think you should all have an idea. Uh, it's page uh, in the book. It's page, uh, I don't know what page. Oh, page one, apparently. Find page one in the little book there. Do not write in the little booklet there. And what I'm going to do is um, some of these will do just orally. But the more tough, the tougher ones, I'll paste them into here, and we'll do them step by step. But I'm just going to say to remind you, please don't draw in the book, please. Transformations review. So the test is done. I believe it's 12 multiple choice. For some strange, stupid reason, in math, 12 multiple choice tests, the multiple choice questions on the provincial are worth 1.5 marks each. It's dumb. But since this is the last year Math 12 is running, I'm not going to change my marks, even though there's no provincial. Multiple choice is going to be 1.5 marks each. And then there's the written section. Let me tell you about the written section. You can either write this down or you can just remember it. I think there's seven questions, seven different graphs. I give you the same like weird shape graph, and I say, do this, do this, do this. I'll even tell you more specifically. The first question is probably a slide up, down, a slide left, right. Very similar to the Math Mouse. The second question probably has a stretch and a reflection. Third question probably has uh, all six. Vertical stretch or shrink, horizontal stretch or shrink, vertical reflection or not, horizontal reflection or not, left, right slide, up, down slide. Okay. Somewhere in there you can anticipate, ah, alarm bell. Right? Gonna remember, right? Though you're gonna remember that. that by the way, I'm not doing this just because it's fun. It is fun. I have to admit to see you guys jump. But I did this. Started doing this about four years ago. At the end of the year, I did a survey. I had about ten of my kids say, "I totally remember that stupid alarm bell thing." So I was okay. It's dumb, but it works, and it's fun. Bonus. Um. You can expect an inverse. How do I find an inverse? Switch the X, like to me, as long as you're careful, that one should be almost free marks. But you know what? For some reason, the particular shape that I give tempts kids to get stupid on that one. The number of times I see half the shape go the wrong way because they relaxed. They did all the tough part, and now they're at the little tail bit and end bit of it. And like, ah, oh, it drives me crazy. You can expect straight absolute value. That also, to me, should be almost free marks straight reciprocal 
And then the last two questions, there's going to be absolute value with a twist and reciprocal with a twist. Reciprocal with a twist, on your quiz, I gave you three things. I think on your quiz, I gave you a reciprocal, a stretch, and a reflection. I'm not going to give you three things. It's going to be reciprocal and one more thing, either a slide up, down, or a slide left, right, or a flip, or a stretch, but not more than one of those things, which means you should be able to get there by hovering the whole way and keeping track of it by hovering your pencil. Oh, invariant, and now uh, three up, or uh, oh, shooting off to infinity, three up, and still shooting off to infinity, like whatever. That's your task. So, very quickly, number one, what's the correct answer? Read the question to yourself first of all before blurting out an answer. Read the question to yourself. What's the answer? C, okay? This is a classic multiple choice. Out of your 12, five will be like this. And what I mean is, it's going to be straight, glance at it, think about it, go to your answer. You're not going to have to write anything down. It, it may be more stuff than this. To me, a, a better multiple choice would be uh, one left and three up. And then I could have a one there, a three there, a one there, a three there, a one there, a three. I could mix and match a bit more and give you a few more choices. But do you understand what I mean by a, it's a thinking question, but it's a straight recognition question. Okay. Number two, horizontally expanded and horizontally translated. And, uh, uh, let's see, that means followed by. Well, let's see. First of all, horizontally expanded by a factor of three halves. This one I think I'm going to write down. So this one I'm going to go, where are you, clip? Now, horizontally in my mind, I almost always underline that because that just screams to me x, 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 x. Yes? If we're expanded by a factor of 3 halves, what did I replace x with? Amanda. Nice catch because it was always backwards. So the first thing I would cross out here is what? And please don't on your tests, but the first thing that I would cross out here is what? Because I'm a good test writer. Why would I even leave those there? In fact, probably I'd do this to really make sure they didn't distract me. Then that would move it C units. It doesn't say a direction, but I think it implies positive, so t to the right. What's the correct answer? That one. Or that one. D, because you would, when you made the substitutions, bring in brackets. This here is C right followed by horizontal expansion of three halves, not the order that they gave me. Okay, so that's a little tougher. They threw some algebra in there too with that C units. Again, we talked about how, Trevor, don't let that scare you. Is that box in your way or can you see okay? Okay, um, don't let that scare you. Easy way, Ryan, for me to take a basic question and ramp it up a notch is replace everything with letters. In your head, or on a scrap piece of paper, or in the margin, replace it with nice happy numbers, do the math with the numbers, and then say, it's got to work the same way for the letters, right? Absolutely. Number three. So here is an example of one where you have to think a bit. The graph is given below. And then it's transformed to that. What's its new domain? I would consider this one a mini curveball. Not a nasty curveball, but a mini curveball. Now let's talk about curveballs. On your 12 questions, two of them are, one of them is, is, I would say, very tricky. One of them is medium tricky. And one of them is, oh, you're going to kick yourself afterwards because I already know almost everyone's going to get it wrong. And when I go through it, all of you are going to slap yourselves on the forehead because you weren't paying attention. Tricky. Okay? I call those all curveballs. I will never give you a written question curveball. The written question, I've already told you what it is. On the multiple choice section, one, two, three at the most. Okay? This to me would be a entry level curveball. So let's copy this one. 
you can always copy it onto a scrap piece of paper if you want to, or you can just follow along. By the way, um, I'll print this up, this page right here, up for you when we're done. So if you learn better by writing down, fine. If you learn better by just watching, fine. I'll print as many copies as we need, whatever works best. Okay. What's the domain right now? I don't know. What would the domain be if this was 3, 5? What would the domain be right now? You see, by the way, Ryan, see what I did? They gave me letters. I'll fall back on nice familiar numbers. I'll do the math for that. It's got to work with letters. <clears throat> if I told you that was 3, 5 and I said, what's the domain of that graph? What would you say? I'll give you a hint. X... x everything to the right of 3 is that not correct domain right x greater than or touching 3 yes 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 i can't i'm not getting any feedback from you yes give me a nod if i say yes I'll make it, then i know okay is that okay steph um i guess that's the domain okay i saw my way through that didn't scare me ain't so bad now Let's walk through the transformations. Anything horizontal will affect the domain. Anything vertical, I'm not even going to care about, because how can that possibly affect the domain? First of, all, first of all, alarm bell. I don't like the way this is written. This should be written as... It should be that. Yes? What's that mean? Horizontal or vertical? Okay, I better take care of it then because it could affect the domain. Expansion by two or compression by a half? Which one? Thank you. Horizontal compression by a half. What's this mean? What letter is that right there? Nicole, horizontal, compression by a half, compression by a half, Th I was going to the next step, three, right. I think that's what you would do if it was a number, wouldn't it? Like if that was a six, it would become a three and then three right, or if that was an eight, it would become a four and then three right. It's a P, you divide it by two and three, uh, it's that one. Remember these days? Never again. In the last year's run. Memories. Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked at the pre-calc 12 curriculum, to be honest. That's after spring break sometime. Then I'll care. Yeah. Is that okay? That's an example of how I would handle a curveball. Now, pause. Did I do anything new there? Nope. Stubborn and clever. Okay, and strategy number one, they try and throw something algebraic at me, put numbers in there. Shut up, put numbers in there, do it to the numbers. It's got to work the same to letters. So if you have a question, are you looking befuddled? Or if someone here was, we're good? Okay, let's go to the next one. The graph of that is a reflection of the original in what line? What kind of a reflection is that, horizontal or vertical? <gasps> it's my favorite! horizontal. What line am I spinning about though when I do this? Which one? Is a horizontal reflection a reflection about the x-axis or about the y-axis? It's about the y-axis. Okay? A vertical reflection is about the x-axis. Did I say everything's backwards? Yes. Um, what about C? Which, which transformation is a reflection about the line y equals x? There is one. Amanda. Inverse. What about D? They had to come up with something. Have we ever brought in Y goes negative? To me, I'll use the words if you understand the way I mean it. To me, D would be a stupid guess. You've never seen it before. It's never shown. Why would you circle that one? Right? I mean, at least I'm going to circle stuff. I'll circle things that I've seen before. Felix never mentioned negative X. Turn the page, or do you guys need to? Next page over. Oh, turn the page. Thank you for following along. 
How does that compare with that? How does the, that graph compare with y equals x squared? So now they're saying, we've given you some function notation. Here's a specific graph. Here's the parabola. And I'll be honest, look up. I would do this first for multiple choice because what is that? Two what? Two left, I would cross out C and D right now. Even though that's not the correct order to graph it in, if I was answering this, I know, I'm assuming all of you will get that part right because that's math 11 still. I would say hey, that's two left, I would cross out C and D. Expansion by four, compression by a quarter, which one? Expansion by four, A. Okay. So there's an example of a more advanced knowledge question, but still a knowledge question. Did we really write anything down? I probably would on a test write some things down because you're always hedging your bets, but you know, certainly if you held a gun to my head, I could do that in my head, no problem. Number six. Now, this is heavily graphics intensive. I won't give you one like number six on your test because I'm not that good at graphics. I would probably find a way to phrase this into function notation. However, here's what it says. This graph is transformed four ways to produce graph one, two, three, and four. Which of the following corresponds to the transformed graphs? Let's see. How does this and this relate? Huh? Inverse. How could you get that or figure that out? Here's what I did. I said that looks around negative three, negative two-ish. That looks around negative two, negative three-ish. I think I switched the x and the y around. And yeah, it's also a reflection about the line y equals x. Uh, what about here? That one, right? C, graph 3. Reciprocal? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, two asymptotes right there. One high, one high, state invert, negative one high, state invert. Yeah, I'll give you reciprocal. And D, horizontal reflection. I doubt I'd give you all four of these in one. The odds are I'd give you just one graph and say, tell me what's going on. Well, actually, the odds are I won't give you very many graphs. I did the graphs on the written, and that took me about two hours of typing. <sighs> the graphics are a pain. I wasn't going to do it on the multiple choice. So far, so good. Number seven. That is shown below. Looks like the absolute value graph. Which of the following is a graph of that? This is interesting because we're taking the absolute value of the absolute value, but don't let that freak you out. Just think V-shape. Um, I see two things going on here. Absolute value, yes, and two down, which is first. Two down. So in your head, move this graph two down, and then take the absolute value. What would that look like? Sesame Street is brought to you today by the letter W. And now you know the graph for a W, by the way. Question, Nicole or Eric? No, we're good? Okay. Whoop. Number eight. The partial graphs of two functions are given below. There's f of x, the original. And there's g of x, the new one. And I notice, look, 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 they gave me a point. 0, comma, negative 2 became 0, comma, negative a half. What do you think's going on here looking at the graph and looking how that point was affected? See, I think reciprocal, right? A negative 2 became a negative a half. I think they just flipped it. Um, let's see. Here we're getting bigger. What are we doing here? Getting closer to 0? Yeah, I think this is reciprocal. I think g of x is the reciprocal of the original. Is that okay? Or did I lose you? Did I lose you? Good. Okay, at least I'm learning to read your guys' body language. You guys, are, I don't know. I'm having a tough time reading my classes this year. So, do you notice that the negative 2 became a negative a half? That suggested to me that it was reciprocal. Okay. 
getting further from zero, getting closer to zero. Ah, uh, getting further from zero, getting closer to zero. I, I think this is reciprocal. I think G is the reciprocal of the original graph. The answer is D. Is that okay? By the way, I, I would have photocopied and emailed this out to you guys, but what does it say in huge letters right here? I don't have the rights to this. Otherwise, this is a nice little practice test, but sorry. Okay. Here's a nice little twist. Number nine. In fact, this one's worth flipping. So... This is how I can take a basic question and turn it from a C to a C plus or a B minus. Emily, what's that mean? Four? What's that mean? Four? Left and one? Which one? Sorry, I caught you off guard. My bad. Amanda, what's this mean? Four? And? And? I'm sorry, but I was going to say, and I would expect every one of my students to be able to get that in their sleep, but maybe you were asleep, right? Four left and one down. That, to me, would be too easy. So here, uh, sorry, that, I said there's going to be like five easy no-brainers. That would be one of the five easy no-brainers, but how could I make this question a bit tougher? Still four left and one down, but give you a graph and say, what's the new range? Well, what's my old range right now? What's my range? What's the range of this right now? Come on, boys and girls. It's math 10 and math 11. Steph, what's the range right now? One is a number. One is not a range. How high does this graph go? How low does this graph go? How will I write that? First of all, with a range, letter Y. Yes? Everything below and touching 1. Yes? Okay, you need to know that for tomorrow. Then you know how to write a range tomorrow. Now, how has this been moved, Emily? For what? One what? With authority. Will a left affect a Y? So I'm going to ignore that. Will a down affect a Y? Yeah, move the range one down. There's your new range. Easy, if you think about it the right way. Impossible if you've forgotten how to do the range, or you just don't, you, you, like, you know what? Most kids, when they come across something new, they panic and they freak out. Again, did I do anything new there? No. You guys doing okay back there? Okay. I figured so. Sound like you guys are working ahead. Make sure, again, you're not writing on my tests. Thank you. Number 10. Again, here's another way that I can take a basic concept and just add a bit of a twist to it. Which of those transformations would affect both the domain and the range? What affects the domain? Horizontals, right? What affects the range? Vertical. So it better have both if it's going to affect both. Does that have both? Nope. Does that have both? Nope. Does that have both? How do I find an inverse? Which means I think your domain would become your range, and your range would become your domain, and that would def absolutely D. These, I would argue, are among the toughest multiple choice questions, where they give you one graph and say, find the equation. So I'm going to copy this one, and I'll show you how I would approach it. You guys doing okay? I don't care if you're not. You're still stuck. Well, no, you can go whenever you want to. It's not a detention. <sighs> All right. They want the equation of this. Well, which way is this long, skinny thing pointing right now originally? Upwards? Which way is it pointing when we're done? So I would definitely make a little note to myself. There's a vertical reflection. Yes? That helps me. You know why? 
That's wrong and that's wrong. Why are A and B wrong? No vertical. This is why I've been trying to get you guys to glance at your answers every time you do something. Because now even if I freeze, I got a 50-50 chance. In fact, if I can do that for every question, knowing nothing else, I'll pass the test because I got everything 50-50. Right? In theory, I'll pass the test. We'll learn in probability that's not quite as easy as you think. Um, has it been flipped left, right at all? Nope. So if any of these had a negative in front of the X, I would ignore that, but none of them do. What's right here, Trevor? Uh, right in front of it. What's right here? Right in front of it. Also A. You know what? I guess a vertical stretch by a factor. I'll write it down. Vertical stretch. A vertical expansion, I think, sorry, is the phrase we used. Vertical expansion by two, but truthfully, I don't care too much because that's apparently the same in both answers. What I really need to figure out now, has it been moved to left or to up? I think this is the point that I'm interested in following. How far left, right is it right now? Three to the left, negative three. I'm pretty sure it's this point, yes? How far left, right is it right now? Still negative 3? There's no way it was 2 left. You'll notice I didn't find the equation. I got rid of all the wrong answers. I find that's easier than trying to come up with the equation. I only find the equation as a last resort. That's how I do that one. Oh, I guess I should write down 2 up since... When I print this up, you'll freak out if that's not there. Maybe you won't. Okay. The given quadratic function, this parabola, has a positive x-intercept right there, a negative x-intercept, yep, and a negative y-intercept, yep. Which of the following are true? The, what's this stupid symbol mean? The inverse will have a positive y-intercept, a negative y-intercept, and a negative x-intercept. Or, statement two, that there, both, neither, one, or two. Let's analyze them one at a time. How do I find an inverse? Too slow. How do I find an inverse? You know what, if, if you could write on this, what I would do is I would cross out that X, and you know what letter I would put there? A Y, and I would cross out that X, and you know what letter I'd put there? Keep me going, people. And you know, I would cross out this Y, and you know what letter I'd put there? And I think positive Y, negative Y, negative X. I think statement one is true on an inverse. Because when you switch the X and Y around, that's the actual statement that you get. Statement one is true. And I think statement two is false. If it has, it has no x-intercepts. Oh, the reciprocal. I'm sorry. The reciprocal will have no x-intercepts and a positive y-intercept. I thought this was inverse. I read too fast. Let's look at what would the reciprocal look like. Well, there would be vertical asymptotes right there and right there. So there would be no x-intercepts. Anywhere zero high would become an asymptote. So this first line is true. What about the y-intercept? How high am I right there, roughly? Negative 2? What would the reciprocal of negative 2 be? Negative a half. Still negative? Will your y-intercept become positive under a reciprocal transformation? That's wrong. The answer here is statement 1 only. The answer here is C. I'm not going to give you one of those mix and match questions on your test. By the way, your test is similar to the provincials. If you want to know what the multiple choice will look like, the review package that I gave you guys a month ago is what the multiple choice will look like. But this has got some nice thinking questions, and it gets you used to writing a test. Turn the page. What's the equation that represents the inverse of that? How do I find an inverse? Switch the x and y. Thank you, that was much faster. So I would start out by going
x equals negative 2 bracket y minus 6 all squared plus 3. I glance at my answers. Oh, it looks like they got the y by itself. Sometimes they'll let you stop right there. I've seen it once in a while where all they wanted to do, all they wanted to test was, do you know, to switch the x and the y around. Here, they, I guess they want me to get the x by itself. How do I get the x by itself? Yeah, Bria? I would do this, absolutely. Keep going. Okay. Now, when I divide by negative 2, look at your answers. Is there a negative 2 in the bottom of any of your answers? Just a plain old 2. You know what I think they did? I think they took this negative and they moved it to there, to the top. It, it, there's a negative kicking around. Oh, and you know what? That would make this x negative. And you know what? That's going to make this 3 positive. And that means I'm crossing out that one and that one. Do you see that little line of reasoning? I noticed... I told you, glance at your answers every time you do a step. As soon as I divide it by negative 2, I glance here. Wait a minute, there's no negative 2s. And then I said, oh, I noticed that some of these are positive and some... Ah, they took that negative and they moved it to the top, Ryan, and they distributed it. I figured that out. So I'm going to have this right now. 3 minus x over 2 equals y minus 6, all squared. Nope. Right? Uh, how do I get rid of squared, Ryan? And when I square root, what had I better remember? And there's a bit of a hint right there. When I square root, what do I have to remember? Plus or minus. So they must have done this. They must have gone get rid of the squared plus or minus square root. How would I get the y by itself? Amanda. Plus 6. What's the correct answer then? Oh, is the plus 6 inside the square root or outside the square root? Outside. Correct answer here absolutely is A, because you plus 6 afterwards. I am going to ask you to find an inverse equation. I am going to ask you to find an inverse equation on your test, but not this one. I think it's multiple choice. Remember the big transformation unit review quiz? This big boy here? Remember this? I love this question. I love this question. I love this question. I really, 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 you know what? Question number six. Will you marry me? There's your hint. Okay. There's your hint. I'm not repeating myself. I expect you to pay attention. Okay. Or you can rewatch the video and listen to my verbal instructions. If you're at a tutorial. I'm not repeating myself, kiddo. Not a chance. I'm giving it my free time. Okay. That means you can expect to see one that has X's on the top and on the bottom. And you'll have to remember to cross multiply. And, oh, we had more than one y. We got them to the same side. How did we, what was the grade 9 mathematical operation that we are able to pull out of our back pocket? Ah, GCF. I'll let you think about that. Or you can rewatch the answer key, or you can phone a friend. But I like that question. Eric, we're back? Were you ever here? Okay. Here's an advanced reciprocal multiple choice question. It says, an invariant point is a point that remains unchanged. We are, I've made you guys memorize that term because I won't tell you that definition. I'll just say invariant point. So you need to know what it means. Use the graph of that to determine the number of asymptotes and the number of invariant points for the, what transformation is 1 over g of x? Reciprocal. Oh, where did asymptotes come from on a reciprocal? Wherever the original graph was, what? X-intercepts. One, two, 
Three. How many asymptotes? Three. I would cross out A and B. Right? How many invariant points? Invariant points are where? Uh, one. Yes. Two. Three. Four. Five. There would be five invariant points. What was, did I say three asymptotes or two, three asymptotes and five? D, I believe, is the correct answer. Okay. Again, because asking you a reciprocal question on multiple choice is pretty tough because you're really it's drawing. But here's some of the stuff they could throw at you, or they could say, uh, "What would the new domain or the new range be?" Actually, they probably wouldn't, but whatever. That's my hand in the corner. Yes, that's fine. This is not an attention. I'll post this online. I will check your, oh, Joel, check your email tonight because by about 7 p.m. tonight, I will send you the video link to this tutorial and I will send you this file as a PDF, but you guys that are here, I'll print up this file for you when we're done as well. Okay? Too far. Go. Come on. Stop. My computer's getting old. Number 15. What's going on in number 15? Which transformation is this? How, do you, how can you tell it's inverse? Yeah, this is my preferred notation. I like this better. So the new one is going to go through uh, 4, 0 is going to become, oh, you know, I think your inverse graph, I think, is going to still go through 4, 0 and 0, 4. Um, let's pick a better point. How about... Uh, one, two, three. Well, which of those is the inverse? Just glance down and tell me. See us? And you'll notice this whole line actually stayed invariant, sort of. It didn't quite, but it repeated itself. Okay. Definitely going to be something like 16 or 17 or 18, where I give you a point and then I give you something in function notation and say, tell me the new coordinates. So this is worth clipping, I think, Mr. Duick. And the way I told you that I do this is I write the point over to the right, negative 12, comma 6. I list what's going on. What's going on here in the correct order? Steph, I'll pick on you because you look like you're awake. Tell me the transformations. List them. What's the first thing you see here? In the correct order, please. So don't. Yep. Uh, let's vertical. I always want that word for vertical or horizontal. Okay. Uh, vertical, vertical, expansion. vertical expansion by two. Is she right? Why is it a compression? Oh, because Okay. By the way, do, can I guarantee that on the multiple choice test, I will have that answer to pick from? Yes. Okay. In other words, that by far the most common mistake right there. And I'm glad you did it during this tu tu tutorial because it's going to re refer refresh our memory not to do that. But the bad news is in my answer key on the multiple choice, you will find that answer if you expand by two. It'll be there. So vert compression by a half. Keep going. Okay. Vertical compression by a half, that's going to become a 3. Vertical reflection, that's going to become a negative 3. 4 right, if you're at negative 12 and you move 4 right, do you end up at negative 16 or negative 8? I'm willing to bet both answers are there. Oh, yeah, they are. Negative 8. Okay, so this one here, correct answer, B. We're still starting with negative 12, comma 6. Those of you need to go, no problem. Check your emails. I'll get it out by, hopefully by 7. Uh, in the box, please. Uh, it's stacked the same way as the other ones would really help. Thank you. All right. You awake now? You good? You awake? Actually, you know what? Let's go to the back corner. Joel, what's going on here? Can you list them in the correct order, please?
I disagree with you. I do. I do see an expansion compression. I need I again, again, again. The first word I want to hear every time is horizontal or vertical, folks. By the way, are you not figuring out why? Because as soon as you say horizontal, we can cross off certain wrong answers often, right? So I'm doing you a favor. Horizontal, Joel, what'd you say? I agree. Holy smokes. Keep going. Yep. I agree. So horizontal compression by a third, that makes it negative four. Horizontal reflection, that makes it positive four. Eight down, that makes it negative two. There it is. It's very systematic, Maria, if you do it list, point, move out. 18 would be a A minus level question. So let's handle, here's reciprocal with a twist for a single point. Again, the point was negative 12, comma, 6. There's two things going on here, Alex. I see reciprocal, see it? And I see 6 up. Is it 6 up first and then reciprocal, or is it reciprocal first and then 6 up? Yeah, if I wanted you to do 6 up first, I would have written it this way. I would have put the plus 6 inside the reciprocal. 6 up, then reciprocal everything. That's not what this says. So, ready, Alex? Reciprocal. 6 up. Add 6 to that. Glance at your answers, please. What is the correct answer if you add 6 to 1 6? Yeah, 6 and a 6. They just wrote it as a mixed numeral, right? Which was easier than an improper fraction. Seeing why I'm telling you to glance at your answers all the time, by the way? Oh, we're learning. The book you're dropping on the ground, or you just got to go? Okay, in the box, nice and neat, please. Thank you so much. Absolute value with a twist. So, absolute value and then vertical expansion by 2. Yes? So, absolute value of 6 is going to be vertical expansion by 2. It's going to become a... It's going to be negative 12 comma positive 12. Negative 12 comma positive... A! Right there. Okay. Every once in a while, I don't think I did this on your test, but it might be on your final, I can't remember. They'll give you a specific order to do things in. So it says, find the image of point A if it's reflected in the line Y equals X. What's that one? Dominique, switch the X and Y around. So instead of negative 12 comma 6, 6 comma negative 12. And now horizontally expand. And now move one left in the order that they told me for some reason. Okay? We can get there. Written section. Okay? I'm not going to give you one like this, so I'm going to pass. I've told you I'm going to give you one something like this on your multiple choice where there's X's on the top and on the bottom, and I say find the inverse. Would you like me to do 22B with you? Yes? Yes? I'd be happy to. Is Eric aware of what I'm doing? I wonder. So the instructions said, find the inverse. Eric, how do you find an inverse? Without a pause for some mystical reason, I'm going to ask you again. Say it again without a sudden strange little pause in your answer. How do I find an inverse? So I think the first thing that I would do if they wanted me to find the inverse of this yucky looking fraction, Eric, is I would say 6y minus 1 over 4y equals x. You good with that? What don't I like about this? 
Really? What don't you guys like about... Well, to find an inverse, what do you usually do afterwards? What do you get by itself to finish off an inverse? What don't I like about this? I got several Y's fraction. You know what I'm going to do here, Eric? I'm going to do math 8. What is math 8? Sorry? Trevor. Okay. Now, Eric... I'm going to do this once and once only. I won't do this for the rest of the year because I find this offensive in Math 12. I'm going to pretend from now on you'll always see that any number is a fraction. It's always over an invisible one because this is one fraction equals one fraction. Cross multiply. And Eric, when I do that, I'll get 4xy equals... And 1 times 6y minus 1 is just 6y minus 1. We're trying to get the y by itself. Eric, how many y's are there in this question? Let's get them to the same side. How could I move this guy over? Now, by the way, let me pause. So this is where I see kids start going stupid on me, weird on me. They'll divide by y. No, no, you've got, you don't want to bring fractions back. At the very end, you'll have fractions. But right now, you've got the y all on ground level. Yeah, I'm going to minus 6y from both sides. And Eric, when I do that, I'll get 4xy minus 6y equals negative 1. Eric, how many y's do I have right now? How many would I prefer? It would be wonderful if there was some kind of a grade 9 mathematical operation. We use math 8 to cross multiply. It would be wonderful if there's a grade 9 mathematical operation that I could pull out of my back pocket that would somehow turn this from a pair of y's into a single y. What was it? Brianne. Now lean, face Eric and say it. Greatest common factor. I know. I'm making fun of you because you weren't paying attention 10 minutes ago. Get used to it. Factor out a y, Eric, and I get this. Now the y is easy to get by itself because what's happening between the y and the bracket mathematically, Eric? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. So how will I move the bracket over? Now if this was a multiple choice question, there is a chance with that little negative sitting here there is a chance that maybe, Brienne, when you did your cross-multiply thing, you did this first, and you had the 6y minus 1 on this side and the 4xy on this side, and so you moved all your stuff to opposite sides. Your answer might be the complete opposite of my answer. These two are the same thing, where the 1 is positive, negative. The 4x is positive, here it's negative. The 6 is negative, here it's positive. Those are identical answers. So if you don't see your answer, don't freak out. Find its complete opposite with everything opposite, and then you're good. Let's practice. Yeah. Then you'd have a 2y by itself, and then you'd have to divide by 2 afterwards. You know what? When I say GCF, I should say CF. Factor out the y, okay? Um, I'm going to guess that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you folks are okay on basic transformations. So I'm going to spend the remaining time looking at reciprocal and then absolute value with a twist, reciprocal with a twist, and everything. This looks like I have six things. Does that sound good? So number 23 says, the sketch of this graph is given below. I'll cut and paste it here. Unfortunately, here you won't be able to draw with me. You'll just have to follow along. Best practice is to draw it, but such is life. Thanks for closing the door. It's the hat. It's a Carolina hat. I'm okay with that. By the way, what's this one here? What's, how do I find an inverse? You guys are okay with that one? Just do it really careful, but sw literally switch the X and Y's around on the graph. Okay, and I, Folks, since you're the last one staying here, listen to me. Every year on this test, I'm going to ask you, and I'll even be more specific. I think it's the third or fourth graph that I ask you to do. It's an inverse. Every year, kids get all the tough part of the graph right, and it's the final section that's the easiest, and for some reason, their brain shuts off and they trip on their brain, they have a brain cramp. So just be a little paranoid on the inverse. Be really, really, really careful. Okay? Let's do... Pardon me? 
I, I all of a sudden they start going off in the wrong direction because they think they've spotted a pattern and that pattern isn't there, and they just keep going. They give it a tail that's not there. I I, I don't know. Like it, this is one, and I've, it's now been four or five years in a row, and I don't know whether it's this specific graph that I'm giving you guys or it'd be an interesting. I could do like a you know double blind study or something, but it's just I've just noticed. So there's my warning. Instead, let's do this. Let's do reciprocals. So let's do. Okay, and I'll do it right on top of this graph. I'll do it in red. It doesn't really print for you guys, but it'll be a lighter color. You should be able to spot it. Um, what's the first thing that I do to find an inverse? Sorry, find a reciprocal. Dominique? W more specific. Okay, so I'm going to write down here. Awesome. X-intercepts. Gonna be an asymptote there. Gonna be an asymptote there. This question will be worth three marks. You just got a one. And I'm gonna argue that's close to three marks, really. What's the second thing I look for, Dominique? What are the invariants? Invariant. Invariant. Oh, notice it stops here, continues here. I'll be careful with my arrows. Oh! And this whole line is going to be invariant. Yes? Now what? Bug. Standing here, standing here. Shannon, as I move to the left, is my graph getting further from zero or closer to zero? So it's going to shoot closer to zero. Kind of like that. Arrow on the end, arrow on the end. As I move to the right, getting closer to zero, what's the reciprocal going to do? Did you say shoot off to infinity? If you didn't, just say you did and say it loudly. Right? Down here, this whole thing would be invariant. This here, oh, getting closer to zero but negative. Shoot off to infinity but negative. Right? No? Yes? No? Yes? No, yeah, yeah, we're good. I don't mind, you guys are here. Um, you guys are freaking out because I drew my asymptote in the wrong place? I caught it, though. It's the other nice thing. If you're stupid like me, this will catch your mistake. Is that better? Because this is curving closer to zero but negative, shoot off to infinity but negative. Closer to zero, but positive. Shoot off to infinity, but positive. Now this one here, it comes to a stop. Alex, how high? Right there. So if I was marking this, I would look for a big dot at about one half, and definitely a dot stopping. If you put an arrow on there, I'd have to slap you for a half mark. Okay. Now I said to you, I'm going to give you a straight reciprocal on your test, and I won't botch it. Maybe the other one's right. And I'll give you a reciprocal with a twist. So what kind of a reciprocal with a twist would I do? I'll copy the same question, the same graph. Oh. Need to get back to the original right there. What if I did this? Flip everything, but if we were doing it from cold turkey, I would say, well, flipping it, will that change your vertical asymptotes? No, so maybe Mr. Do it can get them correct. Did I get them right this time? Oh, sorry for those of you watching at home for your 30 seconds of sheer panic when you were wondering what the heck I'd done. Invariant points. One high, oh, but then reflect negative one high. Invariant points, one high, oh, but then reflect negative one high. Invariant line, negative one high, 
reflect positive one high. Now I would probably put a little X right there and a little X right there, a little X there and a little X there because those are my original invariant points and that's where I'm going to go back and do my bug trick from now. I wouldn't put a dot there because if you put a dot you're telling me it's part of your answer. But X's I clue in, those are little placeholders. So right here, as I move to the left, I'm getting bigger. So as I move to the left, it would get closer to zero, but positive. Reflect, closer to zero, but negative. Shoot off to infinity, but positive. Reflect, shoot off to infinity, but negative. Right? Shoot off to infinity but negative, reflect. Shoot off to, oop, my pen slid. Shoot off to infinity but positive. Shoot off to infinity but negative, reflect. Shoot off to infinity but positive. Shoot off to uh, infinity but positive. Shoot off to infinity but negative. And it would stop at negative a half. Let's do one more reciprocal with a twist, and then I'll do a couple of absolute values with a twist. You can go whenever you need to. Okay. How about this? Well, you know what? Let's write it this way. No problem. Hmm. Oh, this would be a vertical stretch by a factor of four after reciprocal. Here we go. Is a vertical stretch going to change your asymptotes? I don't think so. So maybe Mr. Dewitt can get those correct again. Invariant points, they're going to move, so I'm going to go little x there, little x there, a little x at the beginning and the end of this invariant line. How high are we right here, Alex? Vertically, uh, reciprocal, still, one. Vertical stretch by a factor of four. Oh. Okay. A little weird, but okay. How about right here? Oh, you know what? That would also end up four high. How about this invariant line? Well, it's negative one, reciprocal, still negative one, vertical expansion by four. One, two, three. You know what? I would look for that right there. Can you hold that thought? Because this one isn't. See? How high is this point right here? Take the reciprocal. What's four times a half? I'm going to expect you to handle basic fractions like a half and be able to, or you can go to calculate if you need to. Anyhow, that guy ends up, strangely enough, being invariant. Right back where he started from. In fact, I think it would do this, uh, closer to zero, shoot off to infinity, multiply that with a vertical expansion by four, really shoot off to infinity quickly, getting further from zero, closer to zero. I think it would do that. I think, I think, I think, I think. No problem. Hey, what about uh, this section right here? It would shoot off to infinity, but with a vertical stretch, it would really shoot off to infinity. And I guess technically this point right here if I take the reciprocal of a half high, that's two high times by four. You could make an argument that I should be eight high right here. I don't think, Maria, I would be that accurate. Wouldn't worry about it. Uh, here, shoots off to infinity. Really shoots off to infinity. Uh, what am I missing? Here, shoots off to infinity. Here, 
gets closer to zero. Is that okay? By the way, the reciprocal of the twist, it's the last question on the test. It's the last question for a reason. I'm expecting some of my kids to get it wrong. Right? It's the separate the A's from the B's from the C pluses. But you'll notice, I think I said to you, I'm not going to give you a reciprocal with two twists, only with one thing. Either a stretch or a reflection or an up-down slide. An up-down slide, you would just move everything up at the very, very end or move everything down at the very, very end. A left-right slide, move your asymptotes and things around. But that you would get by counting. That one, those I haven't done, but those aren't too bad. Now, since you guys are packing up, are there any specific things you would like me to go over? Otherwise, I'll print this up for you. But were there any specific questions you had where you're going, nah, I'm not so sure about whatever? That was your first, not a hand up. Okay. We're good, we're good, we're good. Alex, we're good. Kara, we're good. Yeah? That was, okay. I don't mind sticking around if you want to, but since they're packing up, I'm going to pause the video here. How many of you guys would like a printout of this little thing here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, first of all, let me pause the video.